Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. Um, as you know, Wednesday through Friday, I am trucking. And let me adjust this quick. And today is no different. Uh, we are headed to Minnesota. Um, we did have to take the scenic route. So right now we uh, stopped at 29 Express, which is our normal uh, area to stop just to use the bathroom and to get some refreshments and some food and, and whatnot. But uh, <clears throat> right now we're on a big ice skating rink. Um, I had to pull up real far onto some non-icy ground here. So uh, we're going to have to swing real wide to... Uh, stay on the on the gravel here and not catch the ice and slip and spin um, so let's get at it hopefully I don't get stuck we'll see I'm gonna take it real slow came in here it was uh, I was doing like two miles an hour and I almost uh, slid into the snowbank but uh, I got out of it and then I I didn't hit the snowbank or anything but it was close now we're just on ice uh, but anyways uh, how's everybody's day going uh, mine's mine's pretty decent We uh, got to go to Savage, Minnesota, which is usually where we go um, when we got corn or beans or whatnot. Uh, today we have corn. There, we're out of the ice. Uh, we're going to unload in Savage and then go to like Watertown or something. I think it's Watertown. I'll have to figure it out. Look at my... On, there's a car. Go to Watertown or Waterville or, or something in Minnesota and uh, load up some roasted soybeans. But uh, before we do that, we actually have to do go to a scale, like at a pilot or a flying J or a quick trip, and we need a, a certified empty weight, and then we can load up, and then we have to go to another scale. Uh, and get a certified full weight because the place that we're loading at does not have a scale um, and the customer requires uh, certified weights uh, the one that we're going to be delivering it to so it's going to be a little different than uh, what we normally do day cab actually <laughs> but uh, let me get back to what I was talking about um, there's a few things that bug me in the world of trucking 
working. Uh, mainly, you know, we have this title. It's we're called professional drivers, and uh, honestly, I take that extremely seriously. That I see, you know, there's a lot of people coming out of training or people who've been in the industry for a while that have been, you know, just complacent. That uh, they're not doing things very professionally. starts with doing your pre-trip. Like, I've seen so many people just get in their rig, fired up, and go. You know, and, and truck stops everywhere after they've been gone for the night, whatever. Uh, they'll just fire it up and go. Won't check their equipment. Won't do any of that. I mean, if you're not going to take the five minutes that it takes Check the fluids in your truck, check your driveline, check your brakes, check your lights, check your trailer, then just stay on the couch. Don't, don't even come in. I mean, it's ridiculous. Don't even turn that key. It's, it's part of your job. And I know there's a lot of drivers out there that do as they're supposed to, you know, do your pre-trips, do your post-trips, inspect your equipment every stop or two. Well, that's how it should be, but then you got some of these drivers that are giving us a bad name in the industry who don't check their stuff, who don't care. It's only mainly for just like a paycheck, and you know, that's I don't care about the money, honestly. I, I care about putting myself to a higher standard. this real quick. I put myself to a higher standard. Um, you got your standard right here, and then most of the time you have the company standard, which is like right here. I put myself way up here. Um, do I mean it all the time? No. But I'm still above what the company expects. I'm still above average. Um, I do my pre-trips. I check my equipment out. I make sure it's ready to roll. And I drive professionally. Uh, that's another thing. You got some of these drivers that, you know, not just in, in the companies that I work for. I'm talking drivers in general across to all the companies. With freight. They won't use turn signals, some of them. Some of them speed like a bat out of hell. You know, it, it makes us look bad. And especially during bad weather, I've seen, uh, if you've watched the Bonehead Trucker channel on, uh, Jesus, the Bonehead Trucker channel on uh, YouTube. I mean, you see it way too often. Uh, driver's not driving right for the conditions. They're going too fast. Not paying attention. Not at least to accidents, at least to mistakes. Which could have been avoidable. Oh, these dang hills. But yeah, it could have been avoidable. 90% uh, of accidents or mistakes are avoidable. I mean, granted, sometimes there's nothing that you could have done different um, when you get into those situations. But for the 90%, they're avoidable. Me, personally, I have just a touch over 730,000 accident-free ticket-free and damage-free miles uh, under my belt. And that's because, like I said, I hold myself to a higher standard than most people and most companies. I mean, a lot of people think that 
that this type of work is hard. Honestly, in the beginning, you know, in the beginning, like the first year or two, you probably have really high anxiety doing this. I mean, I'm not going to lie. But uh, after you get a few hundred thousand miles under your belt, I mean, it, it's a cakewalk. Super easy. Uh, you get to the point where if you're in traffic or if you're on an interstate or a two plus lane highway that you know you can predict what the person beside you, in front of you, behind you, what they're going to do just by the way they're driving. Uh, like when I go down the road, I can predict if I see a car behind me and I start seeing them getting antsy where they start yo-yoing in speed, you know, I know exactly what they're going to do. So I make sure that I have an out just in case they mess up or they make a mistake while passing me. Uh, that's what you got to do. You got to make sure you have an out. Uh, I've had, uh, a few years back, I've had a, uh, I was going down the 494 in Minnesota. enough time, you know, like this place that I'm going to first, 
start by 8 uh, and leave the yard by 9 o'clock. Um, and then that would bring me to about 12, 12.30 by the time I get to that place. So, and that's pretty much what it's going to be. Uh, 12, 12.30. Um, you gotta schedule it. You gotta plan ahead. Uh, I see some of these drivers just speeding like a bat out of hell. They're probably running late. And honestly, I don't care. I don't do that. Like, uh, I'm not in that big of a hurry risk my equipment, risk the load, risk other people's lives to make it to appointment time. That just doesn't bother me. Some of these are pretty tight turns, so what I do is I make sure. Oh, I gotta wait for this car. Oh, they're turning. Uh, it really changed me for the better. Like, uh, you know, there's that, I think it's a motivational speaker. They talk about making your bed every morning, which leads to great things and whatnot. Um, and that's true with just like the military. Like, I was 20 years old when I joined the military. I just turned 20. And you know how... 20 year olds are just sporadic and crazy and you know almost just out of the teen life but it really shaped me up like it made me not worry about things you know I have a structure that I had to follow and uh, believe it or not back then I used to be, uh, I used to have like zero ambition. Like I was living in the here and now and you know, I wasn't thinking about my future. I wasn't thinking about doing anything really. And, you know, I was just thinking of doing the minimum to get by. Um, that all changed after the military. Super ambitious. Like I'm not gonna lie. If, if I get a chance to work, I'm gonna work. And it taught me not to quit. Um, Ninety percent of the people that I seen uh, when I was there 
stay there. 90% of the people that I've seen uh, in the military that came with me made it through. Um, some of them, the other 10%, they ended up quitting. They thought it was too hard. And honestly, when I when I first started out, I I wanted to quit so bad, so so bad. Like it's not even funny how bad I wanted to quit. But if you quit on something, it, it becomes a habit. Like if stuff stresses you out, if it gets too hard, it's a habit that you're just gonna want to quit. Uh, so I said, f that, and uh, I pushed through it. was the best decision I ever made. We are almost to Minnesota. We got a little ways. I am finally home. It's uh, about 8:30 p.m., so about a 12-hour, you know, day of uh, driving and whatnot. But uh, we had to. We had some special instructions today on our load. Um, the one that we had to load up um, in Waterville, somewhere in Minnesota, Waterville, Minnesota, Watertown, something. Um, the farmer didn't have a scale, so we had to go to cat scale um, we did that in Northfield we got our empty weight uh, we loaded up and then on the way back we uh, hit the scale in Abbotsford at the quick trip so uh, that's what they needed as far as paperwork uh, it was a pretty decent day um, I didn't have to deliver that load today to, uh, to Krivitz uh, there was just a little mess up on the paperwork it said two instead of four but uh, they said just to bring it to the yard. Um, otherwise, we probably would have been, you know, home at about midnight. But uh, 
that's okay. Um, tomorrow we got a big day, long day. I shouldn't say it's super long, but uh, we're going to be hauling fertilizer um, back and forth. So uh, kind of by Milwaukee. Um, it's in Jackson, Wisconsin is where we have to deliver. Um, and I have to clean the trailer out really, really good. Um, I forgot where we're taking, where we're loading up. We're loading somewhere. We're loading fertilizer and then uh, taking it to Eau Claire. So uh, should be a pretty busy day tomorrow too. But uh, we had 460 miles on today, which ain't horrible. It ain't horrible. Um, so yeah, I will uh, probably see you guys tomorrow. Um, if it gets too busy, I probably won't do a video, but we'll see. So uh, just stay tuned. And <laughs>